The winner of Seinfeld Cup 2024 is... Grandmaster Ali Reja Firuja. Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we will watch together the game between the winner of the tournament, Grandmaster Ali Reja Firuja with white pieces against the best player in the world for now, the world champion. What can we say, Grandmaster Ding Liren? And it will be very interesting game because you know, in my last question, in my community, in the YouTube channel, you can see that I ask you guys which opening do you prefer to learn in the next videos and the results showing that you would like to play the Italian or the Spanish. So maybe it will be here one of these openings. So let's see. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop to c4, knight f6. So this is the Italian opening and the pawn on e4 is under attack. d3 of course Ali Reja is playing. Bishop c5, c3, d6, a4. So now first of all what is the idea of a4? After castle, of course, just b4 and black is losing, right? Because after bishop b6, a5 and this bishop is just lost. So a4, you know, the, the point behind this move is to get some space in the queen side and of course to threat the move b4. So black is playing the move a5 and just avoiding from b4. Bishop g5, developing a bishop, h6, bishop h4 and now queen e7. Very interesting move by the world champion because he said, you know what, I don't want uh, to say where I will castle. Maybe, you know, like short castle, maybe long castle and maybe I, I want to be flexible, right? Maybe he wants to play g5 with h4 h5 you know like g5 h5 to attack in the king side and maybe just to play i don't know bishop d7 a long castle so you never know right queen e7 very very flexible move uh, by black so castle and now g5 as we already um, thought about right bishop g3 and now he played the move bishop to g4 another interesting idea here is to play the move h5 and threatening h4 but now we will not take the pawn on g5 because just h4 and the bishop is lost so we will play here the move h4 after g4 just knight g5 and this is a really good position because this pawn on f7 is weak we will play the move knight d2 king h2 and f3 or f4 and we will have some very good compensation but unfortunately after h4 g takes h4 it's maybe uh, the best move. Bishop takes h4, rook g8. Also very interesting position to play for both sides. But I don't know why. But after bishop g3, Dingley Rance thought, okay, you know what? I'm just developing a piece, a piece. So bishop g4 was played, knight bd2, and now bishop a7. This is very, very important move um, by black. The point is that white... Of course, every game in the Italian or in the Spanish would like to play in the center with d4. And when the bishop here on c5, d4 will be always with tempo. So bishop a7, you are controlling this diagonal, you are putting the bishop, you know, like safe. This is very common move in the Italian or in the Spanish positions. So just remember it. Bishop to b5. It seems that... Firuja is telling, you know what, maybe I want to play d4 and I really want to see where the black uh, king will go, to the king side or the queen side. So for example, long castle here is a very bad uh, choice, I think, just taking it and knight c4 with queen b3, maybe b4 and this king will be very weak here and you know, like, yeah, it's it seems like white attack is just... Uh, tremendous here. So after bishop b5, black is playing the move castle, and now rook e1. As you see, every move counts, right? We would like to bring every piece into the game. Rook e1, we are developing a piece, we are improving it. Maybe knight f1, knight e3. This is the point. Let's see together. So knight h5 was played, and now a very interesting move by Ali Reja. He playing the move king. To h1 and you know here in chesscom the computer says oh you know what h3 was a better one 
The point here is that after knight takes g3, h takes g4, of course, and this is really looks nice. Uh, but if bishop takes f3, queen takes, knight takes g3, and queen takes. And now, as you can see, these points are very weak for black. We will try to get uh, some you know, like uh, some maneuvering knight c4, knight e3, knight f5, maybe knight f1, knight e3, knight f5. So yeah, this is the point for white and it seems really good. But king h1, I really like to see such moves. Why? Because first of all, he's going from this pin, right? From this very, very dangerous diagonal. Secondly, he wants to push a3 without any uh, afraid of knight g3 and f takes g3, right? So king h1 is like very, very calm move. And this is something that I really, you know, uh, needs to learn from Firuja because quiet moves are very strong, okay? So he played the move knight to g7, uh, g7, sorry. He is very, very interesting move. And the point is that he wants to push the move f5. So a very, you know, like prophylactic move, bishop to c4 was not made yet. He played the move h3 first. He's asking the bishop, oh man, do you like to take me or not? So he will play bishop h5 and now bishop to c4. He's putting the bishop on this diagonal. He's understanding that the bishop on b5 did his job, right? And he's doing nothing there. Let's come back to c4. Maybe here in this diagonal is doing much better work. So he's playing the move king h8 with the point that f5, this is his threat, and now bishop to d5. Another improving the bishop, right? Improving the piece. In, in, on d5 is doing a better job than uh, on c4, of course, right? So knight d8 was played, and now the move that we wanted to, to see, d4 in the center. Don't forget that we must play in the center and also just blocking this diagonal from the bishop. So here, the question here, what it will be after e takes d4? Because after c takes, just bishop takes. And knight takes, of course, is just losing the queen, right? So after bishop takes d4, it's very nice move for white knight to c4 with a threat, with queen takes d4. And now after bishop c5, for example, I think just e5. And as you can see, white's pieces are doing just incredible, incredible work here. This rook, this bishop. And also the knight, the knight, the bishop, the queen. Only this rook needs to come into the game. But overall, the white pieces are really active here. So after d4, Dingley Ryan played the move f6. Knight f1 and the maneuvering is coming into the game. Let's see it. So c6, bishop a2. Knight de6 and now knight to e3. Rook a d8 and knight to g4. I thought maybe knight f5 would, would be very interesting here because knight takes f5, e takes f5, and after knight g7, for example, there is a very beautiful move, bishop h2. Another quiet move with g4 threats. I don't know if it's threat, but it looks really nice because when you're protecting this pawn, this knight will be very bad here. So g4 the next move, and it seems like the black pieces are really not active here, right? So interesting move knight f5 but also knight g4 was a lot of sense here because the h6 pawn is under attack and also it providing the knight to f from f3 to coming to h2 f1 e3 and maybe this one coming to f5 so king h7 of course protecting the pawn on h6 and now he played the move bishop to b1 and you know what i must stop right now because do you remember how much moves this bishop already passed in the game, bishop c4, bishop b5, bishop c4, bishop d5, bishop a2, bishop b1. What a road to this bishop, transformation for, for this bishop. And it seems like he's telling, you know, he's telling maybe this diagonal is the best for the bishop. I'm not sure, but let's see what is going on here. So bishop g6 was played and now queen to d2. Another development, another small and quiet move. Knight to f4, and now bishop c2. As you can see, Firuja is playing very soft moves, just improving every move, each piece. And now maybe the rook will come. Let's see. Queen e6, and now rook a d1, the last piece into the game. Everything is very in under control for white. And now h5 was played. Knight gh2. 
queen f7, some moves here, knight f1, another maneuvering to e3, and now e takes d4. Very, very bad move. I don't know why he played this move, but after e takes d4, c takes d4, white has total control in the center. And after d5, just e takes d5, c takes d5, bishop takes g6, queen takes, and now just queen takes a5 with attack here. Also knight takes d5, also the bishop is under attack. I'm not sure what's going on with Dingley Ryan in this game, but he's just losing absolutely. Bishop b8, bishop takes, rook takes, queen takes d5. Knight f4, queen b5, white has two pawns up, and that's it. g4 takes, takes, knight h4, queen g5, knight e f5, takes, queen takes, queen takes, and another very interesting and strong move rook e7 intermediate check king h6 knight x f5 king g6 and knight h4 and now the world champion grandmaster ding Luren resigned against Firuja, the winner of the tournament it's just amazing to see this really young guy is playing against the best players in the world and you know he's one of the best of course you know, after knight h4 just resigned the game because two pawns up for Firuja, it's really enough, of course, Dignorand understanding that he don't have any chance to win or, you know, of course, also for draw, that's it, he resigned it, and, you know, congratulations for just amazing result by the young friends Grandmaster Ali Reja Firuja. If you like this stream, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe my channel, and Another thing, don't forget the Outpost website. This is a new website, very beautiful, with a lot of grandmasters there. And you can see also, you know, like to play one by one and you can take some lessons from the best players in the world. And of course, there are a lot of prize tournaments. So just register from the link in the bio and also in this video. See you soon. Bye-bye.